Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Professional 2022 tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. In this video, we are going to take a look on the different member types and the differences between them and some other extra stuff that can be used in defining members. Alright, so I click on 3D Building Design basically, clicking on the Structural Definition button and there is a button called Member. Now this is the general case of a member which includes everything in beams and in columns together. The members are the general case for members to be defined. You see that there are multiple types of members. Now, about sections, we have covered this in other videos. You can select any section you want. You can define your section. This is not my goal of this video. Also, we defined how to draw stuff in Autodesk Robot. Today, I'm going to define or going to cover what member types are. So, there is reinforced concrete beam. There is timber member, timber column. So the best way to do that is basically to select each one and define me some timber members. Now, this is advanced because timber members have a basically a strong and weak axis because they have fibers. It's not a homogeneous material. I'm just going to add a section like this and simply draw me a timber member between 0 and 5. I'm using the drawing instead of the grid system because I want to draw very quickly. Now, when modeling structures, I highly recommend that you use the grid system. But for now, I'm just going to draw blindly. So what about timber column? Well, a timber column is similar to a timber member, and timber beam is also similar to a timber member. So I think this is more than enough. A simple member is basically everything, so you can click on that. So you see, this is like the general case. Uh, you can select any material you want and define your section. And I'm going to just draw me a simple member like this. What about column? Well, column is a general case of column. Beam is a general case of beam. There is nothing to be added here. All right, so moving on, you have a cable here. And this is a special type of member that is different from all the other members. And you can know it's different because it's a cable. And if you click on the Browse button, you can see that the cable has a different definition from all the other members. Now, there is a name called Cable 1 for the section. And there is an area steel for the section because obviously a cable has an area. The material is steel. Now, a cable usually comes with a pre-stressing force or a pre-stressing sigma or a certain length. It depends on what you have. I'll just keep the pre-stressing force to be 44.48 kN. So in other words, the cable has already forces even if there are no forces applied on it. It's already pre-stressed uh, and tensioned. So let's keep it like that. I will show you what it means in the results. So I'll add a cable now. Yeah, of course, it exists, so okay, fine. I'll add, the, I'll add the cable right now, so this is my cable. There are other uh, members, such as <coughs> reinforced concrete columns and beams, joist and gather joist. This is something I will talk about later. For RC column and RC beam, well, as the name suggests, it's a reinforced concrete column and a reinforced concrete beam. This is what you were drawing here. For good measure, add me a reinforced concrete beam, just to show you the differences here. So, all right, I have defined my four members, uh, steel, concrete, wood, whatever, and cables, and I'm now going to apply me some supports and some loads. So, well, let's just select fixed everywhere because this is just a small example. And let's add loads everywhere. Now, you see the loads are grayed because there is no load case actually. So you will have to define a load case first. And then you define the loads. Now I'm gonna delete the load. Now I'm gonna delete the self weight just to unify the results somehow. And let's apply some forces. So let's go to view basically, hit the force button, member force, uniform, and I'll just apply them everywhere. So yeah, I have my forces now. Now, robot doesn't like structures like this because you see those are separate structures. Those are four separate structures. So if you run the analysis, robot will warn you and tell you, well, separate structures, do you wish to continue? Well, the answer is yes, because I intentionally separated my structures. So it does give you a warning, but we will ignore it because we have done this intentionally. All right, so the results are available now, <clears throat> and I'll just go to results, open the diagrams for members, and open MY to see the difference. You can see that all the beams have, all the beams have a moment diagram except this one. The reason why this one has no moment diagram is because this is a cable, and cables don't have moments. Cables do not resist moments. However, if you go to axial force now, you can see that it's exactly the opposite. The beams don't have axial forces, whereas the cable has axial forces, because the cable resists the forces applied to it by the 
the, the axial force. Furthermore, if you open on labels here and say apply, you see that the axial force here is 44.48 and the axial force here is 46.21. Now the 44.48 is actually the pre-stress you had here. If you, so even if, even if there are no loads, let's say we go to load table and delete our entire loads. If I delete all the loads I have here and go back to my structure and run the analysis, now you should see zeros everywhere. However, this is not the case because you will still see your 44.48, which is the amount of pre-stressing force you have applied on your cable. Now, for the beams, there will be nothing because there are no forces, but for the cables, there is still the pre-stressing force. So please keep this in mind when you read the results for your cables, because there is a pre-stressing force that you should not forget about when you check out your results. So this is the first thing I wanted to cover, which is the different types of beams that you can have. All right, so the second thing I wanted to talk about in this video is the releases, or basically some advanced stuff that you can do to beams. So, okay, let's draw me a beam. So I'll just draw using this grid without applying my own structural grid. So I'll just click on the beam, and let's have steel beam 14257, or whatever you want here. For example, you can select steel beam, wide flange. I'm using the AISC database. Let's say I want a wide flange of 12 by 152, for example. If you add this now, you can select it to draw. And let's draw me a beam in two pieces. And let's add some supports. So I want to fix it on both sides. So this is fixed and this is fixed. And let's add us some loads. So this is my dead load. And there is a load of, let's go to view to have a better view. There is a load of negative 10 kilonewtons on that beam. So, okay, fine, let's do this. So I have a beam, and if you run this, you can see expected results, which is a result that you see when you have a double fixed beam. So if you go to diagrams for members, you hit on MY, you can see, and how can we apply an internal release here, or an internal hinge here? You can do that by going to geometry releases. Now this dialog opens for you. There is fixed pin, pin fixed, pin pin, and there is all kinds of releases. Now to understand it, let's double click on fixed pin, for example. If you click on that, you see that, well, the beginning is perfectly fine, and the end is released, which means it doesn't resist the rotation in X, rotation in Y, and rotation in Z. It allows rotation, so there is no moment. All right, so this is for the fixed pin. What about the pin fixed? Well, it's the exact opposite, which means the start is here. It means the start is released and the end is not released. Here, it means the end is released and the start is not released. You can, of course, apply any release you want yourself. You can even go to elastic releases and gap releases and nonlinear releases. Those are things that are too advanced, and I will cover them in an advanced video. For now, let's go back to the basics. So I'm using fixed pinned. Now, you have to be careful where you click, because you're saying fixed pinned, which means that the end is released and the start is not released. So if you click like this, this would be a mistake because now the end is on the left side, which means that you are releasing a support, which, I mean, doesn't make sense at all. So let's apply a delete release. And let's release it by clicking the correct way, which is this one. So now this point is released. So if you close and run the analysis, well, it runs perfectly fine. And now if you go to the results diagrams for members and select on MY, you see that it has been released and there is no moment on that point. Also, if you click on the deflection shape, you can see that there is a discontinuity in the slope exactly as you would suspect for a release. And that is how you release a beam. Now, beams can be released in moment in X, Y, and Z. Columns can be released in that direction too. When you have a reinforced concrete building, as we will cover later in the future, sometimes your columns are not connected to your beams using moment resistive connections. In that case, you would have to release your columns from your beams. I just wanted to remind you that the results of beams or anything is basically with regard to the own X or Y axis to the local axis. So if you click on that, you can see the moment around Y is your bending moment, which is in this direction. Now you can switch the local axis direction by going to geometry and going to properties and changing the local member direction, which is odd, but it's something you could do. And if you want to do that, you can 
adjust the orientation of the axis sense. Now, I highly recommend not to do that. We civil engineers in the entire world are, are used to saying Mx means torsion, My means moment bending, and Mz means bending moment from a horizontal force. So I highly recommend not to change that. So this is one thing you can do to members. You can also add additional attributes to those members. For example, you can add brackets to those members. You can even make a member become a trust member. You can make it by force. To show you that, let me basically quickly add something to uh, this view. So I'll just go to uh, the grid and add me a grid in x equals 0, x equals 2.5, y equals 0, and z equals that. So apply. So now we have something here. So I just add me a column here. So I want a steel column, and the steel column is has a height from here to here. And this is my steel column now. So I apply the steel column. This is just to show you something. So if we run the analysis now, the calculation changes, and you can see the moment diagram has changed to fit you the new structure accordingly. Now this column is really huge. Let's make it smaller. And let's click on the section and make the column smaller. All right. And now let's run the analysis. All right, fantastic. So now the moment diagram reflects the column being here. Now let's say that you want to force this column to become similar to a truss member. How can you do that? Well, you can do that either by releasing it because truss members cannot calculate because truss members cannot carry moments, so a release is perfectly fine. Or you can go to geometry and go to additional attributes and say advanced member properties. In that case, you can make it become a truss member by force. And you can even make it become a compression or tension member. This becomes extremely important when you want to define bracing rods. So for now, I'll just leave it for truss member and apply the truss member here. Apply. Yes. So let's run the analysis. I think I applied compression here. I, I'm not sure, I forgot. So, of course, here the Autodesk robot suggests me to use the DSC algorithm to kind of stabilize the nonlinear behavior of the trust member. This is advanced stuff I will cover later. For now, you can see that there is no moment on the bar, on the, there is no moment on the column, and if you hit on results diagrams for members, well, you can see that this is FX only, there is no moment, so everything seems to be fine. So that's it. That's what I wanted to cover in this uh, video tutorial. I hope that it was beneficial to you and that you liked it. If it was beneficial to you, please consider liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. It helps a lot. This is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will see you in another video.